Hi guys, today we're gonna be talking about Chicago and uh, maybe some about USA. Um, it's one of the stories that uh, I heard about uh, several years ago when I was not uh, actually interested in this mud flood uh, because I didn't uh, see very much uh, specific evidence but uh, actually uh, this story uh, is uh, proving something and if we start uh, reading this illustrated history of phrasing of Chicago made by Lily Carey we'll uh, probably find out some interesting facts so mid-century mid-19th century Chicago was an emerging titan of agribusiness and Burge, burgeoning transit hub, a potential star of the Midwest, and a disease infested swamp in danger of being reclaimed by Lake Michigan. By 1855, with roads knee deep in the sludge, city has uh, city hall faced a massive undertaking, hoisting Chicago out of the muck by raising the streets and structures as much as 14 feet. On the 155th anniversary of the project's launch, we look back at the nearly imaginable fit features, I think. So, uh, what they show us uh, are some pictures that we should watch and read what is uh, underneath. The horse lost in the mirror was a common joke in 1850s uh, Chicago, but the state of the city's street was no laughing matter. So it's like, do you need help, sir? Oh, no, no, thank you. I have a good horse under me. So it's like supposed to be funny. Most roads and buildings foundation had been laid just above water level, leaving no, leaving no room underneath for sewers with waste unable to drain. The dirt roads had devolved into unsanitary box likely adding to the rampant spread of scarlet fever, dysentery and cholera. It's like, oh my, she's going to a toilet probably, which is not working. Where she's going, huh? So this is supposed to be the city council. He's like saying, well, if we want a sewer, we can't have it below street level as things are. And so it's in 1855, city planners brought the engineer Ellis S. Chesbro from Boston to take charge. Presented with the sewage problem, Chesbro submitted a bold, if outrageous sounding proposal. So we simply raise the street of Chicago and make a new street level. So he's saying, oh, he's nuts. And so began the task of hoisting Chicago out of the out of the jink, I think. <laughs> so something like a swamp, probably. Chesbro's plan plan involves raising this, the roads up to ten feet, creating a new street grade that could accommodate sewer pipes plus gas and water mains below ground. Those streets and walkways were public projects. The responsibility for lifting buildings fell to individual property owners, some of whom simply built new, s new steps, I think, and entryways on the second floor, leaving the former ground floor to act as a basement. You can still see homes with first floors below ground level in present-day Chicago. Just remember what the, uh, this slide says. Let's go to the next one. So this is how they did it. <laughs> In 1857, with the aid of 200 jack screws turned millimeter by millimeter, workers lifted the first masonry building at Randolph and Dearborn streets, creating space for a new foundation to be poured underneath. 
Okay. James Brown, an engineer, oversaw the project before joining up with James Hollingsworth, a fellow engineer, to raise many other brick buildings across Chicago, even entire city blocks. Hmm. Did you feel something? Hmm. One of the most impressive feats lifting the Tremont Street occurred in 1861 with guests still inside. Luxurious and vase, the hotel covered about an acre at Lake and Dearborn streets and stood six stories tall. Workers inched the hotel up a bit every day until it had been elevated a full six feet. Hmm. I prefer the view I had yesterday, that woman says. Guests went about their business while 500 men tinkered with. 5,000 jack screws beneath them method methodically, methodically raising methodically raising the hotel my word according to local lore one gentleman realized something was afoot only when he noticed the front steps growing stepper and stepper steeper and steeper each day it's looking good, boys. The job helped make the reputation of George Pullman, the engineer, industrialist and future railroad car tycoon, when the firm of Ellie Point Smith and Pullman successfully pulled off the project without any damage to the building or interruption of daily life within. While Chicago's skyline gradually crept upward, many owners of wooden frame structures decided that rather than elevate their buildings, they would move them elsewhere. This was accomplished by rolling the in indices on the wheels or wooden logs to the outskirts of the city. Some business owners went along for the ride to keep watch of over their shops. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> Chicagoans grew Chicagoans grew accustomed to, to seeing their city shift up, down and sideways as it blossomed into a more hygienic and efficient place. By the late 1850s, with many buildings in place, Chicago was ready to start laying new streets. Wooden blocks were dipped in tar and laid like bricks, then covered with pitch and a gravel, the resulting surface called Nicholson pavement was considered the primary paving methods of the time, providing utmost comfort for horses and riders alike. The Herculean effort of raising Chicago was a fantastically ambitious undertaking, but ultimately a success, priming the city for decades of growth. Oh well, and Chicago was getting along quite well with its newly heightened, heightened status, at least until the Great Chicago Fire brought its buildings back down in 1871. So it's like 10 years. So moving those all those cities just for 10 years, jeez. So what we should accomplish from this? So some of them moved their houses to outskirts, so this was really stupid, to lose the land and stuff like this in the center of the new growing city, huh? Uh, this, okay, these guys say that by the late 1850s, but with many buildings in place, so by the late 1850s, so by the 1858, 59, many buildings were already in place, so they were already Re rising, I, I guess. Uh huh. So okay, but at least here he said 1857. So probably the first one moved in 1857. So it's like uh, after the uh, time that I uh, really um, really research because I say that. Uh, that flood that brought about um, at least six feet of 
uh, clay and mud onto each street of each antique town uh, of Atlantis, previous Atlantis Union. So it brought many floods to all those towns and all those cities and all those lands. And so probably this is the level that they lifted up Chicago. So as they say here, um, where did they say it? Uh, in the second slide. Some of whom simply built new steeps steps and entryways on the second floor leaving the former ground floor to act as a basement so if you find some house with the basement and it's older than uh, this uh, 1850s and stuff like this you can say oh those guys didn't want to lift their house up and they just built this thing and if you find the house actually lifted they say, oh, they just, you know, poured some concrete and made a new foundation. Hmm. But, in fact, when you start to research this thing, you understand that there is no, not much evidence of that. And all those articles in Google and, and, and the, in the pictures in Google image show the same, same pictures. Bird first floors, some bird first floors, and something like what? This is not a photograph, this is nothing. This is also a drawing, it's not a photograph. And that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. In every, every single, we have the same. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Here, here we go. Raising of Chicago Google Images. The same, same, same pictures. Nothing else. But I tried to check if really Americans uh, had pictures in 1850s. They had plenty of pictures. At least uh, Google does it. Uh, Google finds those pictures. I don't know how old are they, but probably we have those pictures and plenty of them at least this one is on the first map it's dated 18 19 plenty of kids here another another time it shows 1890 so why don't we see these pictures uh in older ways maybe these are the pictures of 1850s and they say this 1890 who knows but at least I've seen many uh, pictures, I'm not ready right now uh, to uh, say about this, but how, how old are those pictures actually? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But they say photograph was made in these ages and we saw many pictures of uh, Civil War. And it's supposed to be at that at that time um, when they were raised in Chicago. Why don't we, we have any pictures of that in 60s and 70s? And they say uh, it was done for uh, 20 years. For 20 years. So at least to 1870s when it was burned. And when it's burned, we don't have any evidence. And if we find some buildings with, that are actually... Uh, the pre-flood buildings, pre-catastrophe pre, pre buildings, they say, oh, it was raised. Why not? But if you raise the whole town, you're supposed to bury all those streets with something. Six feet tall level. And, and they say it's uh, up to, uh, let's say, and they say it's up to 14 uh, feet. 14 feet. So think about it. Also, if we go to Seattle, uh, we also see undergrounds here. The same as in Atlanta. So we read all those uh, Chicago thing. 
The raising of Chicago went on well over a decade, but sadly much of the city, including their entire central business district, wherein these mighty feats were accomplished, was consumed and turned into a desert overnight by absolutely horrific Great Fire of Chicago. Okay, very good. Very, very good. So, think about it, think about it, think about it. I'll probably make another video on this and uh, if you have more information on San Francisco, Chicago and any, many other cities. I promised I'd make uh, a video about New York streets and they still have the same there, this type of thing. So, thanks a lot for watching. See you later. Bye.